Hello everybody. As you can see, I do not have enough game systems. There are only 54 in here. So in this video, I'm going to add 5 more. I'm going to also be building something to put them on. So there's actually going to be some woodworking in this video. There's going to be a few things that go wrong as well. So this is going to be a very unusual video and hopefully you find it entertaining. It will not be scripted. Throughout this video, I'll be switching the background music to different tunes from different video games. Try to guess which video games they are from. After a while, I'll put the name of the game on the screen. So the five game systems are in this box, and let me reveal them to you. So we have the Neo Geo Mini, the PlayStation Mini, you kind of see where this is heading, the SNES Mini, the NES Mini, and the Genesis Mini. These systems are going to go on the right side of my setup on the bottom two shelves. I also ordered a TurboGrafx Mini, which hasn't arrived yet. I'm going to buy more Mini systems in the future too. So bottom line is, I'm not only going to hook these up, I'm going to leave room for the other ones I anticipate buying in the future. So normally when I have game systems in my setup, I would put them on these black trays. These trays allow you to tuck the controller cords uh, underneath the system, and it also uh, hides some of the wiring behind the system. If you want to know where I get these black trays, there's a link in the description. Like with the other systems in my setup, these systems will be hooked up and ready to play. But when I put a mini system on one of these black trays, it just looks stupid. The console is just so small. Since I want to put four of these on one shelf, there's no way I could put four sets of trays on a single shelf. I want to be able to still hide the cords. They get all over the place. And some of these have extensions on the cords so that I can play them from far away. So that just adds even more length to these cords. So instead of an individual tray for each system, I'm going to design one large tray that extends from one end of the shelf to the other. You're seeing me go through a creative process right now where I'm laying some things on the ground and trying to determine what this new module needs to look like. I need some boards that are off the ground with some gaps in between the boards and within those gaps I can hide the different cords. So I started drawing some schematics. This picture is a little hard to see. What it's showing is a side view of what the module will look like. There's a layer of plywood at the top that's held off the ground two inches and underneath the plywood are these chambers where I can stuff the cords. The controller is leading against a square rod and the cord for it is going to go above the rod a little bit and then down below the system. The power and signal cords will go out the back and be plugged into the setup. I had to think in three dimensions so it was kind of tough but I drew a sketch of what I think this module should look like and I started coming up with some dimensions of the wood that I would need to cut. If I were you I would not copy this and try to do it on your own. There's some things about this sketch that doesn't make any sense. This is just a rough draft just to get the concept in my head. Now you'll notice these two side panels that will be two inches long and those are going to hold the plywood up in the air. There's going to be this little extension off those boards that holds this rod in the middle that the controllers will lean against. And there's also going to be a divider in the middle just to make sure that the weight from all this stuff doesn't cause the middle of the uh, unit to dip down. With that in mind, I went to the hardware store and made some purchases. The plywood that I wanted was either too big or too small at the store. I didn't want to buy too much and I didn't want to buy too little. So what I ended up getting is some wood planking instead. 
These are made out of pine. I don't remember the dimensions of these. It is more than what I need, so I'm going to be cutting it down to size. Some of it is not in the best condition, but I'll be cutting this a lot, so the bad parts will likely not make it into the final product. Now as for that rod, I found this display in the store. There's two different sizes that I ended up buying because I wanted to test which one would be better. One is uh, 1 inch by 36 inches and the other is 1 and an eighth inch by 36 inches. And I'll just return whichever size that I don't use. The thing about it being 36 inches is that's lower than what I need it to be. I need it to be about 43 inches long. So I'm going to actually be gluing two pieces together to make it longer. For the side panels, I am going to use some wood that I had on hand already. I have designed other video game related things with wood in the past, so I have a nice scrap pile of stuff on the floor in my basement. Once again, these are pine, and I will be cutting them to size. I also bought some paints, some light gray, and I'm not sure if I'm going to like the color or not. I just basically went to the store and looked for something that would match my current setup, basically. I got flat because it's not easy to slide things on, so when I have the game systems on top of the flat paint, uh, hopefully it'll keep them from scooting around too much. So I started marking the boards and where I need to cut them. And keep in mind, I am not a professional woodworker. If you are one yourself, you're probably going to be annoyed by some of the things I do. But keep in mind, I'm learning more and more all the time about how to use wood. Huh, <laughs> wood. So I made a cut of one of the rods. And then I used that piece to glue onto one of the other rods. And I'm using wood glue and some clamps. I'm putting some plastic underneath where I glued them together, and I'm going to hold them together for 24 hours. And so I started making the other cuts that I needed. And so with the pieces all cut, I vacuum cleaned them and then I took them into the game room just to dry fit them to see what they look like. It's pretty close to what I had in mind, but I obviously made some kind of cutting error for the side beams. They are too long. I was going to attach those side beams to the rod that's in the middle, but I'm thinking now I'm just going to leave the rod on its own and not attach it to the rest of the unit. Otherwise, it still looks pretty decent. So I'll be cutting the sides all the way back to where the first shelf is at, right there. So now that I've finalized the design, I'm going to be cutting the other pieces of wood that I have. And keep in mind, I'm going to be building two of these. Now that the glue is dry, I'm going to remove the clamps on the rod, and it turned out pretty well. I'm going to now do this with the other rod as well. I went upstairs and dry fitted to see if the rod is going to be long enough, and it is. I also decided to do a little side project since I'm already in the woodworking mood. I'm going to do something with the Ouya here. The Ouya is a resurgent console that's going to make a comeback one day. I want it to be visible. Right now it's not visible behind its controllers. So I want something to put underneath it to uh, prop it up a little bit. What I did is I took some of the spare wood in the basement and cut some squares. And what I'm gonna do is stack these squares up 
and make a pedestal. I'll be gluing them together. And right here, I'm just testing to see how many I would need. I decided to go for four squares for the Ouya. I have a similar issue with the hyperscan. I'm gonna create a pedestal for that, and that one's gonna be slightly taller than the Ouya because it has a lower profile and it's on the top shelf. So I glued those all together and I put some paint cans on top of them and I left them there for 24 hours. All the cuts have been made and I'm now dry fitting them in the basement, getting them prepped to be screwed together. In my opinion, it's starting to look very good at this point. So right here, I'm just positioning things and pushing them together. They have to be perfect because once I drill them, it's not going to be easy to go back. So I'll be using these wood screws and I do not remember what the size of these are. I used these same ones to build my video game shelves a long time ago and they work pretty good. I actually bought a second drill. I always wanted a cordless one. One's going to have a drill bit and one's going to have a driver bit on it to screw the screw in. This saves a lot of time. So I clamped one end of it down and I started doing the drilling and it went pretty well. Sometimes the screws didn't go down as far as I wanted them to, despite my best efforts. But I'm going to be painting over everything, so people won't notice the screws at all once everything's embedded into the setup. So everything turned out wonderful. I mean, it's not perfect. There's one edge that didn't quite line up, but I don't think anyone's going to notice it. It's going to be back on the far side of my setup. So I gave everything a good cleaning and I'm now ready to paint. I have the modules propped up on the floor beams above me. That's going to help me paint all the different sides of it. And my first coat I am going to be painting underneath. Even though most people aren't going to see underneath, I do want that coating on the wood just to protect it. And I'm going to be very careful with the joint where I glued the two pieces together. So far it's holding up pretty well. So once the paint dried, I took it back upstairs to see how it looks with the consoles on top of it. 
color-wise, I do not like it at all. It turned out more blue than I expected. It looked more gray in the store when I bought it. As far as everything else though, this module turned out wonderful. It's working exactly how I envisioned it. So I decided I'm going to change the color and I had a discussion with my wife and I had a discussion with myself about what color that should be. I was thinking about a dark gray, but I was also thinking about red, which is the color of the walls in the game room. And I had red left over from when I painted the walls in the game room. So I went ahead and chose red. So I took the pedestal and put it underneath the hyperscan, and it turned out very well. I also did the same for the Ouya, and now it has the proper respect. So here's what the final dimensions of the wood ended up being. There's a little bit too much red in the game room. Don't be surprised if you see this again in a future video and it's black or gray. So as planned, the controller cords are tucked underneath the systems and the power and video cords are going underneath the back panel. Off camera, I'm going to be hooking these up to the TV. I do have to order some HDMI cords. So in future videos, you'll see these hooked up and ready to play, just like the other systems in the setup. So I'm ready to add more mini consoles as they come out. I also have some random stuff sitting on the shelf as a placeholder in anticipation of the next gen consoles that are going to be coming out, hopefully soon. On the screen right now, you'll see a playlist of what I think are my best videos on this channel. There's another video on the screen that might interest you as well. So thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time.